Hello and welcome to the concluding video on HR analytics. In the preceding videos, we have gathered some understanding on what is HR analytics, what is the role of HR metrics, and how are HR practitioners making use of various level of analytics. In this video, I just want to take you through what is the strategy that HR practitioners should use in order to bring value to the organization by making use of the statistical toolkit which is available to them. To begin with, we should always expect or we should always ask what is the expectation of my organization in terms of monetary value, in terms of non-monetary value. Now, normally organizations expect HR department to bring a lot of things. They expect HR department to bring a lot of intangible benefits including capability building, administrative efficiency and change readiness. Similarly, organizations expect HR department to bring in two important aspects. One is that they want HR to maximize the value or the return on the investment that they are making on the employees. Second is they expect HR department to minimize the cost associated to the human resource. Now in both ways, you need to give them mathematical number and you are worried about from where to start. Now the starting point will always be to get into the descriptive reports or descriptive analytics and then move on to the predictive analytics. Now descriptive analytics will always start from the five broad performance measures suggested by Jack Fitzgerald. Now you have to think about the metrics which are around these five measures. I think we have done one activity in the third video where we talked about the efficiency and effectiveness of the sourcing or recruitment channel and we created the metrics on all these five measures. Similarly, we need to think about these metrics for all your actions inside the HR department whether it is employee development or retention or support function. Fortunately, the life is easy for some of us because we have already a matrix which has indicated the list of such indicators. But most of these indicators are descriptive. Most of them are a number which can be easily calculated. To me, this is the starting point. For example, I think we have discussed about the acquiring or recruitment. So let's talk about the retention or the retaining function. Now, in order to measure the effectiveness of the employee retention, you have to calculate the cost of the employee turnover. Now, cost of the turnover may include several things like the entire cost of recruitment, the entire cost of training, the entire cost of supporting and much more. So these metrics are super metrics. So you may have to go deeper into that. You may have to further use lot of mathematical model and much more. Similarly, readiness level looks an abstract term. So in order to quantify this, in order to measure this, you may have to create an instrument or a scale. Again, you need a lot more statistics. So from here, how should we move about or consider or assume that we have a lot of data and we are able to find data on all these metrics that still will not be sufficient because the HR problems will start from there. For example, you have all the data on training and development, but then you want to measure the comparisons, the performance before training, performance after training, the performance across departments or something beyond that. So let's move on to the most important thing for the video for this session and that's about what is the role of the statistical toolkit in solving the HR challenges. Now in this slide I have written about seven to eight most common HR challenges. Again the list is not exhaustive. This is just an indicative list for some of us in order to see the application of the statistical tool. Although I wanted to take up one or two application, but looking at the time constraint and looking at the importance of all, I do not want to take only one, but rather explaining 
all of them may be at a beginner level so the first kind of problem that generally organizations are confronted with is the satisfaction level of employees and organizations are successfully able to complete or capture the data on the satisfaction survey but after that you have to analyze that you have to find out that whether the satisfaction level of one department differs from the other department so in these kind of problems you may simply use independent sample t test correct similarly you may have a training program that you have conducted and you want to measure the impact of that so there are multiple ways but the most common way is to get a feedback before the training and a feedback after the training and then see the significant difference and this can be easily measured using paired t test similarly you may have another training or another intervention where there are more than two groups in that case you may use one way analysis of variance and all these tests require you to calculate the mean score and the comparison of mean and there are some assumptions associated to each of them you need to fulfill them you need to look at the the type of variable you need to look at the distribution of the variable you need to look at some other things before you look move into it but then these statistical tool will support you in order to make a lot of decisions similarly you may have some intervention and you want to measure the intervention or the value of the intervention for two categories now this becomes an interesting thing and the answer to this will be one way repeated measure anova i think this is easily available on spss similarly you may have problem of diagnosing the employee engagement you may have different factors of employee engagement and you want to see which is associated to which so you may use simple correlation analysis to find out the association between different variables or components of employee engagement similarly you may use regression in order to solve the problems related to measuring and predicting the employee performance employee performance becomes the dependent variable and then you have 3 4 5 independent variables then you can see the beta values and then you can look at the standardized values and compare them so, so things can be done effectively similarly you may use binary logistic regression in order to predict the the variables or the problems like offer acceptance or employee turnover because in such cases the dependent variable can take only two values either yes or no and the binary logistic regression analysis can help you in predicting that using the existing data or there can be problems with respect to exploring new metrics or exploring new variables for example in the previous slide we talked about readiness level now readiness level can be a new metric or indicator for you so in order to create that test that you may use exploratory factor analysis correct similarly if you want to segment your employees on the basis of the performance or on the basis of their awareness level or on the basis of any other factor then you may use cluster analysis and there are other things that you may use for example if you have to use the chi square test then you can apply it just for uh, comparing the frequencies that can be used for diversity analytics and let me reiterate again that this is not the exhaustive list this is a tentative list of the hr problems and how can we make use of the statistical toolkit available now if you look at all these 8 9 problems most of them would require you to use ms excel but maybe in a couple or maybe more than 2 3 you may require some software like spss or r or any other software depending upon the availability now some people or some managers may not like to go into all such statistical analytics and they would like to look for the shortcuts in order to impress the organization or the department and in order to derive some value so for those kind of practitioners there are some tools which are available or some metric which are available and they can be explained as descriptive metrics for example recruitment department or recruitment function may like to use some other metrics rather than saying 
कोस्ट रिक्रूटमेंट दे में से रिक्रूटमेंट कोस्ट रेशियो इन दिस दे में कैलकुलेट द रेशियो ऑफ द न्यू हायर्स और द कॉस्ट ऑफ न्यू हायर एंड देन कॉस्ट ऑफ अंडर परफॉर्मर एंड देन इट विल गिव यू स्लाइटली कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव पिक्चर करेक्ट एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वुड डेफिनेटली लाइक टू मिनिमाइज दिस सिमिलरली इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट द टाइम यू मे यूज टू स्मॉल मेट्रिक्स वन कैन बी रिस्पॉन्स टाइम वेर इज आर टी कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड बाय सब्ट्रैक्टिंग आर आर फ्रॉम आर डी आर आर इज द डेट वेन द रिक्विजिशन वॉज मेड एंड आर डी वॉज वेन फर्स्ट क्वालिफाइड कैंडिडेट वॉज कोल्ड फॉर द इंटरव्यू सो रिस्पॉन्स टाइम इज समथिंग दैट यू मे लाइक टू मिनिमाइज अगेन and then time to fill vacancies rr remains the same and then you have od od is date of acceptance of the offer so some people will use rr sorry rt some will use ttf but both of them represents the time factor time variable similarly there is another thing which will represent the time and that's about job posting response rate response rate includes the number of people who are responding to the posts that have been available so again it is important in order to see the quantity that how many people are responding so you have an indicator on quantity you have an indicator on maybe quality quality can be measured through rnage rate but this is very initial level although there is nothing on quality and nothing on the what do you call as uh human or human reaction but there are metrics on the cost and the time and the quantity correct similarly there are people or there are practitioners who would like to quantify the return on investment on training a simple formula now this formula may again look simple but you have to take a lot of other things into perspective for example how do we calculate the benefits of training now again in this whether you want to capture the reaction only or the learning or the behavior change or the monetary outcomes but it is difficult to quantify the point that i am trying to make is similarly companies or departments may like to use another formula in order to see what is the buyback period of training investment so if you have invested so much of period and you are getting monthly benefits on a regular interval then it may take 6 months to 1 year time or maybe 2 year time in order to reap the entire benefits and you can calculate the payback period of the total investment that you have made now again with practice and with context you may create more such formulas based upon the requirement of your organization similarly companies may look for the human capital revenue factor now this is an easy thing to calculate you divide the sales by number of employees or you divide the revenue by the number of employees you will get the revenue factor or the sales factor now again these things may be used to benchmark one company with respect to other company correct and again you cannot compare you have to compare oranges with oranges or apples with apples so you cannot say for a service industry the rpe is more than the uh, manufacturing industry that has to be so you have to look at service versus service and within service whether it is it versus it or it versus banking or some other so so these are merely indicative and they require a lot of contextual understanding before you actually implement any of these now company will expect you to give some metrics which are beyond all this initially i have said that the expectations are only two or three one is intangible benefits one is the monetary benefits and monetary benefits can be calculated by either of the three formulas the first formula talk about human capital cost factor where you add up all the cost associated to the human resource whether it is pay and benefits or contingent labor or expense cost or turnover and similarly you may have another metric which can be used as or calculated as human capital value added here you calculate the value uh, by subtracting the employment cost or the pay and benefit cost similarly you can calculate the human capital return on investment 
by using a similar formula. So organizations may expect different metrics. Your department may be comfortable in different metrics, but your problem may be altogether different. So you have to ensure that all three things are aligned. Whatever is the problem, you solve that. Your department should follow that, and your company should be convinced about it. It's not always that you have to minimize the cost factor. You may maximize the value also, or you may maximize the ROI also. So it again depends upon several factors and the context. But yes, you can always set up the analytics, and you can steer it by doing the organizational diagnosis, prioritizing the problems, evaluating the key deliverables in terms of the metrics, and then synthesize the data to gauge the problem and come up with the solution. So these are the four things that you must do in order to steer the HR analytics. Considering the time constraint, I have to keep it very short. Let me give you the last slide, and this talks about the skills required. I think I have talked about all of them. It's just a reminder that you need to possess much more than the statistical understanding. You should know about the metrics, the origin of the metrics, the expectation of the company. You should have good acquaintance with the analytical tools, and then how should you implement and align the entire function with the organization. Without all this, it will be difficult for you to master in the HR analytics. With this, thank you so much.